Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first video in our Level Up X series. Our first speaker in this series is Kyle Benak, who will be giving a talk about Salesforce Object Recon. Kyle is a product security engineer at Human Identity. He does security research in his spare time. He plays video games, including Elden Ring and Old School Riskhead, and he enjoys gardening and exercising in his spare time. We'll have a quick Q&A after the talk, so stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk about Salesforce Object Recon with Aura Intruder. My name is Kyle Benack, and I am a product security engineer at Ping Identity. Now let's get the party started. First, we're going to go over the contents of this talk, starting with the boring background information leading into the interesting research, and finally, the demo fun. The boring background info involves Salesforce objects, how Salesforce interacts with files, how Lightning components send requests with the Aura framework to and from Salesforce, then we are going to talk about interesting objects, anatomy of an Aura endpoint, anatomy of a Salesforce file endpoint, Aura intruder features, the fun stuff, and finally, the demo. So, what is a Salesforce object? In Salesforce, we think about database tables as objects, we think about columns as fields, and rows as records. I could not have said it any better myself. Standard objects are pretty much exactly what you think they would be. And uh, those are default objects in every Salesforce environment. They have the standard permission sets, but you still want to check field data because you can add custom fields to standard objects. Um, custom objects are objects that are created by Salesforce devs to implement custom functionality. These are, for obvious reasons, subject to user error. Um, most of the time they have custom permission sets and are, have a uh, underscore, underscore C suffix appended to the end. And it's pretty much the same scenario as don't roll your own crypto because anything that has been ironed out previously could um, be re-implemented via custom implementation. So moving on. Salesforce objects of interest. Alrighty. So standard objects of interest are the user object, account object, partner object, etc. Pretty much everything that has to do with the business um like the business assets or company employees and all that good stuff. The, so with these objects, there's a lot of potential for like PII leaks, um, etc. For a custom object, they can be named literally anything, and they have, like I said previously, an appended underscore underscore C. Um, so you can make an object called this is fine and it could only have a image of the this is fine meme. I'm surprised someone hasn't done that already. Maybe I should. Moving on to the Aura framework. The Aura framework basically is used by lightning components to send data to Salesforce and back to the actual Lightning component. That is, just, and then that data is displayed through the web app. So you can think of web apps being client side, and web apps have embedded Lightning components, and the data flows from the Lightning component via Aura request to the server side Salesforce objects. Now let's look at a request. This is an example or a post request. So it looks pretty similar to a lot of, you know, post requests you'd see via web app. Um, specifically, 
what's different is there's a lot of cross-site Salesforce attribute headers. Um, and attributes to note here are via this message equals JSON object. And this JSON object is um, what is sent uh, with the Aura framework to Salesforce server side. Well, in quotes, server side. Um, the specific parameters that we need to keep uh, when we implement it into the extension, Burp Suite extension, are the Aura token and the Aura context and entity name or ID. The entity name or ID correlates with the actual Salesforce object that we want to get data from. So for example, for example, users would be an entity name or ID. Moving on to how does Salesforce handle files? A file is stored in the content document object. Each file object has a unique identifier once it's uploaded and there are three endpoints that can be used to retrieve an object based on a prefix. The first endpoint is the document endpoint, second is content document, and third is content version. And all of these endpoints can be used to look up a file based on its unique identifier. All right, so how are we using this research? We're implementing a custom burp intruder payload generator with our Python extension, automating several steps to find data leaks faster. We're making use of Burp Suite's Jython support and importing Python packages to create additional functionality for the extension itself. What is Aura Intruder? So the TLDR of Aura Intruder is you send an intruder request, parse the response, and automate discovery. In more detail, what happens is a burp suite extension, this burp suite extension automates object data leak discovery via the Aura framework recon, which includes standard object discovery, custom object discovery, and public file discovery. And if public files are accessible, this Burp Suite extension will automatically download all public files after you have provided a JSON response. Using Burp Suite's API with Python. We're importing several different modules here including interfaces that implement additional functionality and GUI components. There are two standard Python modules that we are also importing for payload processing purposes and requests. Uh, these include JSON and URL lib3. Seeding data to Burp Suite. One of the core functionalities for Aura Intruder is being able to seed the standard object list to Burp to the Burp payload generator, and this is how we're automating discovery. So, as you can see with this for loop, after the text file is opened, it is going through every line because every line is a payload. Um, well, every line is a standard object that is being added to the payload so that we don't have to manually go through every standard object case um, and insert it into Intruder. And uh, one of the interesting things to note here is that the payloads array is appending a byte array, that single payload and stripping the new line character. Um, yeah, I just thought it was interesting that payloads are converted to byte arrays in burp. 
Halo Generators. So this is where the magic happens as far as like parsing payloads and making their requests. Um, so once the function, the J button is clicked um, and the load object payloads function is called, this class will handle the payloads. Custom functionality. So one of the many things Python is good at is prototyping functionalities pretty quickly. Um, so I noticed that sometimes attachments could be downloaded uh, as a guest user, like public attachments, but I wanted a way to enumerate all available public attachments by the unique ID that was generated. So what I did here was iterate over a JSON response that had all the file public file IDs that were accessible to a guest user and went through all those ID IDs with a for loop using URL lib3 sent a request out and downloaded the files that existed to a directory and this worked this works pretty well it all depends on the environment though if um, what attachments are public to a guest user Now that we covered a lot of the technical pieces of the Aura Intruder extension, let's go over how to install extensions with Burp. This is mostly for anyone that hasn't installed an extension that wasn't from the Burp Suite marketplace. Um, so what you do is you go to the extensions tab and you add the extension from source and then you select the extension type, and then in this case it's Python, and then um, the main file that loads the extension is uh, salesforceintruder.py. Please note that Salesforce is not in scope for the ping identity bug bounty program. Sawi. Please check the program scope to ensure you get rewarded for your hard work. It's always a good reminder to double check or triple check bug bounty program policies because we want you to get rewarded and nobody wants that awkward moment where you're like, oh no, I have to mark this as an informational or out of scope. So yeah. All right, now we can get to the fun stuff. And I'm going to open my handy dandy Burp Suite Community Edition. And there it is. So starting off, Let's just go through um, how to set up a extension from source. For those that haven't done it before, uh, I'll just remove this. Yes. Um, so when you're setting up an extension from source, you click on add, which is under the extender tab. The extension type for this, this extension is Python. And I'm going to select auraintruder.py because that's the main file that loads all the components. Um, I would also like to note that for Python extensions, you need a Jython JDK. So everything is good to go between burp and Python. Now, after I click next, the extension is loaded. I can close this window. You can see the extension loaded under the extender, in the extender window under extensions. If I look at the top right of my screen, you can see the Aura Intruder tab. This is what the iTab interface is for. Just for tabs, who would have knew? 
So if I click on or intruder, usually the first function that I run is Salesforce Object Recon. So if I click on Salesforce Object Recon and I go to the proxy, I've already proxied a Salesforce request that is from the ping identity support portal and I am this request is as a guest user so only the objects that are visible to guest users will be viewable um, when I use this tool so as you can see there's a giant post body message which is um, basically a JSON object and what I usually do is URL decode th this, but um, I don't really need to do that right now. But if I'm curious, if if I'm making sure like the objects are switching and stuff like that, I'll U URL decode this giant blob of text. Um, what we need to keep is the aura token, which is down here, and the aura context or if we don't keep it, then Salesforce is like, what the French toast are you doing, man? Um, so I'm going to copy this. And actually, I'm not going to copy this. What the French toast am I doing? I'm going to delete this um, and send it to Intruder. And I already have one actually no this is the pre-populated one so if you control if you use control a to highlight all the text you can clear the pre-populated payload targets um, the only place that we need to add a marker is the message parameter for aura intruder now since we already clicked the button for Aura Intruder, the recon payload is already loaded, so all we need to do is start the attack after we select extension generated payload type with the extension payload generator Aura payloads. And if I click start attack now, it should be two requests. Um, well, I tried to do it. I tried to pull a Houdini for some reason. That was weird. Um, yeah, so you can see there's two requests and this is the one with the payload. Now, um, Let's actually go over the message payload because this is what returns the configuration for the environment. Um, it shows the uh, all the objects that are that are uh, public to guest users. So now, if I go to decoder, you can see that. It's actually sending a request to the host config controller, which then returns the all the components that are viewable to this um, to this guest user. All right, so let's go back to the um, request and view the response. So it doesn't take too much scrolling to see where the objects start. So the API names to key prefixes JSON list here or object. It'll list out all the standard objects as well as custom objects that are viewable. And as you can see, there's quite a few. So we don't have to go through all that list. But what you would do ideally is copy this JSON and parse it 
to get the custom objects out of it. So I've already done that um, and I'm going to show you what how that works. If I go back to Aura Intruder and click get custom objects and go back to extender after clicking find standard objects the results will be printed to the burp suite UI as you can see here there's three custom objects that are indicated by the underscore underscore C that's appended to the end Alrighty, let's review the Git Salesforce standard object data feature. After clicking the ginormous button, the payload generator will then be populated with all 1096 Salesforce objects that are standard. Then we would go to Intruder and start the attack. I already have a Intruder instance running with these requests because I figured I would get rate limited which I'm pretty sure I did um, because it's only at 516 out of 1096 this doesn't usually happen when I'm using um, a VPN so it's good to note uh, you should probably use like a, some sort of VPN when doing this so you don't get sent or added to the list of, hey, block this IP. <laughs> Anyways, I guess I'll find out if that happens to me later. Um, when this is sending requests, uh, generally the objects that are empty will be around 2,000. Um, but you can tell when it's working when you get the state success. Uh, so like this object has no data in it. And let's see if we can see what the name is. Uh, so this is uh, event, event um, or accepted event relation. All right, so. Let's find one that already has data. All right. So when an object has data in it, it'll be around this amount. Um, and it'll be really obvious. The length attribute will be like way higher. So um, this is calendar object and in the response you'll see the IDs of the calendars um, I haven't found a way to exploit the calendar object yet but you can tell there's a ton of different records in here um, the other object that will we will be messing with is the let's see content document yep okay so this is a content document object and so when I was talking about the file endpoints earlier this is why the content document object will have the titles of, of the, um, the attachments and documents as well as the ID this ID is the ID that will allow you to download the file um, and that's only if if a guest user can download the file um, so I got this to work a couple times and then I think the Salesforce admins shut the door on that they probably saw the requests and figured this does not look like it's supposed to happen. <laughs> um, but we can try it out and see if it's still possible. 
So yeah, all you do is you save that response from that from the object. Um and click download files from response. And if it's working, it will Yeah, I don't have the file. Let's see. Um I can Well, this is a good indicator of showing how easy it is to debug an extension when you have when you're logging exceptions. So I can try to live debugging. Here we go. So if I save all this and holy moly, there's a lot of stuff. Whoa. All right, I think we got to the end finally. Is this the end? Nope, it's not the end. There should be a closing square bracket. Wait. I'm pretty sure there was one. Here it is. Okay. Now we copy this and let me save this as the file that it wants to be saved as. Um, and that was extender, no such file directory, files, JSON, response.json. So now if I save it to or intruder files, JSON. Okay, so save. Let's see what happens now. Extender. Extra line. And this is where all of the oh, I see the problem. So the result field is all that you want. Um, so that goes all the way down to this bracket right here before error. Anywho, that fixes the issue. Now the only other thing you would need to see if you could download files is replace the host in the Python script. I don't currently have a host. Um, I'll show you what the request or the function does though. So you click this, download files from, from response. Um, and then in, in extender, if it's working, you won't get any errors like this. Um, but this is using URL lib3, um, that module's connection pool to send requests to the Salesforce endpoint based on the unique IDs. And um, those files are going to be saved to the files directory. And then from there, you can tab through all the files and images to make sure there's nothing nothing sensitive being exposed in your Salesforce environment. All right. And so that is it for the burp extension. Um, Thank you for attending my talk about Salesforce Object Recon. Here are some additional resources if you're interested in 
more Salesforce related security research, or if you would like to make a Burp Suite extension, I will be available after the talk to answer any questions you might have. I want to thank Bug Crowd for inviting me to the Level Up conference. I've had a blast. I also want to thank my team at Ping Identity for allowing me to present this here today. Thanks, everyone. Have an awesome day. So how and why did you get started in research here? Um, so I kind of like fell into uh, security research. Um, I uh, always liked messing with computers growing up and then uh, got into game development. And um, a researcher named Ed Overflow actually reached out to me about the Gratipay uh, Hacker One program. And I submitted a couple reports there and it was a good experience. Um, and I liked the creativity that goes into hacking. So from then on, I was hooked and I knew that's what I wanted to do as a career. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. So what would be your number one tip to new researchers? Um, I think my number one tip to new researchers is um, to not try to focus on like everything at once um, because if you try to learn everything at once, you're kind of like, drinking out of a fire hose, so to speak, because there's so much data um, um, to research. So if you focus on one uh, area that you like a lot and um, get good at that one area, you know, over time, um, you know, another thing is, is that you're not gonna be amazing at finding bugs like right away. Um, it takes a lot of practice and, uh, you know, you'll see, you know, people finding bugs and you're like, wow, like they're finding all this stuff, what am I missing? But like it'll just it'll come to you over time um, after you know so like independent study and uh, you know you just have to keep at it. Great. Uh, where did you learn about Salesforce testing? Um, I I learned it from my um, current current boss Arthur. Um, so you know he pretty much asked me if I was willing to like research Salesforce and um, and uh, like mainly focus on the PII data leaks that are involved naturally with the Salesforce platform because you know you're dealing with a lot of business related data there and um, so yeah Arthur sent me a bunch of articles to read and um, from there I just uh, researched a bunch of other like topics that were related to Salesforce and yeah and so that's all that is going into the talk that I'm giving at this conference. Great. Um, the tool looks really exciting. I'm really keen to try it. Um, is it being released? And if so, where can I find it? Yes, it is absolutely being released at the Ping Identity GitHub um, publicly. And uh, I'll post a link like after, you know, after the talk is over. And I'll probably tweet it out too, you know, all that good stuff. Great. Um, what is next for the tool and are you planning on implementing further features of functionality? Um, yes, I'm planning on implement, implementing further features uh, and functionality uh, over time, um, just to make it, uh, I guess the workflow a little smoother. And after I learn more about um, how to create like GUIs and Burp Suite, um, I could probably, you know, make some other like cool intuitive features uh, for the extension. Great. Thank you so much for taking the time to present your talk today, Carl. No problem. Thank you for having me.